Hey party people, welcome to Crazy Town. Why crazy? Because I just developed the industry's first single product paper. This is a quilt work of different types of sandpaper, specifically grits of sandpaper, ranging from 600 grit all the way up to 2500 grit. What is the brainstorm behind this moment? Well, if you've been tuning in recently, specifically, I have been droning on about this polish, the industry's original, what is called single product polish. What that means is you need one polish, not four, to go from heavy defect removal down to a swirl free finish. And by defect removal, that can mean defects in the paint or wait for it, sanding marks. Wet sanding, color sanding, clear coat sanding, sanding marks. This is the industry's first single product polish. So what I did is I thought, wait, if Tom Horvath can reduce what the industry would have you believe, which is multiple compounds and multiple polishes to get from point A to point B. If he can take modern day technology in the form of non-diminishing abrasive technology and basically solve all my polishing problems down to a single product, I'm gonna take that a step further. And I'm going to fabricate and engineer the world's first, wait for it, single product paper. So what I did is I cut out different grits of sandpaper, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,500, 2,500, and I fabricated them into and onto a single sheet of sandpaper. Why? Well, two reasons. One, probably the most important reason, is to be completely absurd. Yes, to poke holes in this world called the polishing and compounding world of paint, paint care. The second reason is to kind of make sense of what we have all been trained as good little sheeple to know that, okay, if I want perfected paint, I want paint that has defects in it, I want to correct it and have less defects in my paint, I therefore need, wait for it, multiple products in order to go from point A to point B. So that was kind of the brainstorm that I jumped off of from this product. But wait, you say, Darren, why is that absurd? This is what the industry has taught us. Sometimes it's hard to know where to start. So let me start here. Why is it absurd? Because among these product line, I've got 3M, Manzerna, Rupes, Sonax, Chemical Guys, Americana, Adams, Jescar, Griots, uh, Cock Chemi, Detail King, The Wax Shop. Most of these have multiple stages, multiple products to get you from point A to point B. But most of them, if not all of them yet, and wait, Time out, sidebar, your honor. I have a prediction. I predict that in the next couple of years that every polish and compound manufacturer that still exists in a few years will have their version of a single product polish. But wait, if that's true, which it is, why? Well, one, because it already exists and has so for the past 20 years, also, I would say probably at least half of these companies have, well, they have their multiple products, compounds and polishes, as well as a one step. Now they'll call it different things, like a true one step compound or true one step. So which is it? Because to me, that's a rather duplicitous position to be in. That's what I call playing both sides of the fence. So over here, they've got this extensive product line, but then over here, it's like, oh, but if that doesn't work, or if you wanna make your life easier, then we've got our one-step correction, one-step compound, one-step polish. It's like, oh, wait, which is it? So for example, let's uh, go with 3M. Their perfected purple bottle identifier there. Step number one. Step number two. 
Wait for it, step number three. So what they're telling me is based on the defect removal that I need to attack, that I'm going to need three products in order to get from point A to point B. But wait, if that doesn't work for you, or if you're tired of this insanity, well, then they've got a product just for you. For all those logical, critical thinking people in the audience who say like, hey, uh, I know it can be done because it's done in other industries and has so for decades. Why can't we do it in this industry? So they have their perfected one-step finishing product. You can call it a compound, polish. Based on the description, you can call it both those things. The point is, it's one product to get from point A to point B. So I've got to ask, and I think it's a fair question to ask of the industry, specifically 3M, not to pick on 3M, but okay, uh, 3M, you told me I need three, you have three, but now you're telling me that I only need one. Well, which is it? Because this makes more sense to me if in fact it will work, but maybe it doesn't work or maybe it kind of works. Well, they always have a backup plan. It's called their three-step. But wait, there's more. Because then we uh, segue into the baby vomit yellow, which is their, I don't know what you want to call this line. I know they have a line for it. But the point is, is, oh, in case you don't like the purple color, or if you, in case you don't like the numeric system, one, two, three, you can default to the baby puke yellow and the letter system. So they have A, B, wait for it, C, because maybe I can't count. Maybe I don't know how one, two, three works, but I know how A, B, C works, so that's their backup plan. But if none of that works, once again, I can default to the one step. Okay, but wait, there's even more more. So let's uh, talk about Minzerna. Here I have the heavy cut compound labeled precisely their performance compound. That's the heavy lifting. I'm done doing the heavy lifting. Now I need to do the medium lifting. Well, they have a medium cut polish. So we just segued from heavy cut compound to a medium cut polish. See, no consistency in this industry. And then they've got their super finish. Well, that's super because in case I just didn't want to finish it, I wanted to super finish it. Well, they have that answer for me, their high gloss swirl remover, which in case I didn't want just a swirl remover, now I can get a high gloss swirl remover. But wait, in case that doesn't work or in case you don't want to manage and purchase and juggle three different products just to get from point A to point B, well, then they've got their one-step polish. Yes, one-step polish. You know why I know that? Because it says so right there. And it also says cut, gloss, and wax. So they just introduced a new term to the lineup, glossing. So this will cut, do the heavy lifting, glossing, the medium lifting, and the waxing. That's actually a fourth step because that's finishing in the form of protection not finishing in the form of fine polishing. So, wow, I don't know about you, but my brain is beginning to melt. So, I don't wanna melt your brain completely. Mine's already turning gelatinous. So let me get back to my innovation, which is an absurd innovation. I don't think this is ever gonna catch on. So this brings us around full circle to this absurd moment. And yes, it is absurd. That's part of the point. I often use hyperbole and absurd, ridiculous moments to illustrate the point. It's kind of like using metaphors. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you know I love metaphors. In fact, I don't think I've ever met a metaphor that I didn't like. Yes, I borrowed that from a specific book called that. I never met a metaphor that I didn't like. So let me go further down the rabbit hole. This type of sandpaper is made using abrasive particles that are attached to a piece of paper. Now these abrasive particles are under the classification of diminishing abrasives, meaning as you use them, they diminish. They, the edges get rounded off, so the cutting ability becomes less and less. That is how they're engineered. That's just accepted. They naturally will break down because of it, it is diminishing abrasive technology. So how do we control 
the rate at which these diminish? Well, you can't entirely as you're using it. So what they do do and have done pretty much since the beginning is they make it in different grits. So if I want to do the heavy lifting, then I'm going to reach for 600 grit. Not in my world, by the way. My world, I don't start out with 600 grit. I'm not going to even venture in until uh, at least 1,000 grit and up or 1,000 grit and finer. But this is how you control diminishing abrasives, which is why this nonsense and this hype makes sense. Because you think, well, okay, Darren, let's take, for example, chemical guys or weight. How about one of the newest players in the market all the way from Germany. So welcome to America. They just had a big launch, which I was invited to, but I turned down because I didn't want to fly. It's called this thing called COVID whatever. Um, not that I'm overly worried, but I just didn't want to fly. So they're the newest players in this overly saturated market. So they have three. We have heavy cut, fine cut, and wait for it, micro cut because micro cut is finer than fine cut and fine cut is finer than heavy cut and then they have their micro cut and finish so this will do some additional refining additional cutting but it will also finish in the form of finishing like a polish and protecting because this is formulated with carnauba which I could dissect this product alone. For example, as I'm using it, how do I know if it's cutting or protecting? Is it laying down some abrasives so that it's jeweling the paint? Or is it laying down some carnauba to protect the paint? Like literally, how do they know? Is there a little genie in this bottle that will say, okay, uh, user, which would be me, Darren, what do you wanna do? Do you want to cut, polish, finish, or protect. It's like, well, I want to do everything. It's like, okay, well, that's what this is for. It does everything. Well, how do I know what it's doing in the moment? Huh? The problem with diminishing abrasives, there's really no control. Best case scenario is this kind of control in the form of different grades of sanding grit. With the understanding that this is made with diminishing abrasive technology. So let's go deeper down this worm hole and talk about non-diminishing abrasive technology. It's what I have labeled as controlled abrasives. That's what this is made out of, controlled abrasives. You know what the difference is in the world of sandpaper? This is diminishing abrasives, but this, Sia Karat, Sia Karat, depends on who you ask, this is made with industrial diamonds. Yeah, real diamonds. You know why? Because diamonds are classified as non-diminishing. Of course, you can diminish or wear out anything eventually with the right material that creates friction against it. But this is super, super hard, like super duper hard. So this, as well as being massively more expensive than that, will not diminish as you use it, but eventually it will. I'm trying to draw a parallel, a comparison between diamond abrasives, non-diminishing abrasive technology, non-diminishing abrasive technology, one product. What that means is that I could make a compelling case as to why this works, but I could make a compelling case as to why this works and why this works. So you say, well, oh, I'm stuck, Darren. I'm not sure what to do. Well, I'm unstuck. You know why? Because if nothing else, let me create a distinction for you. The formulator of this, Tom Horvath, thank you very much. He made all of our lives much simpler. He stepped up to the plate as an answer to the problems as a body shop owner. He was a custom restoration shop. He actually took first place in a Concours d'Elegance at Pebble Beach. And I don't know what year that was. I think it was in the 80s. Point being is that he was in what you would call a high level, high end car restoration shop. The industry could not answer his problems. What were the problems? Well, swirl marks, comebacks, 
uh, solvent-based products that would go get gooey and sticky and gummy as you use them. Cleanup was horrid. Uh, these solvent-based products would plasticize, which means, well, think of cement. Cement, while it's liquid, it's still water-soluble. Uh, latex paint, while it's wet, it's still water-soluble. Once it dries and the solvents or the water evaporates, it can't be reversed. Yes, it can be disintegrated and broken down, but chemically, those bonds have connected and it can't be reversed with just water. But wait, that was one of the problems that they couldn't answer, which is cleanup. Cleanup, cleanup is a big time sock. Now, when you're in a high volume shop, time is everything. So he engineered this with a surfactant. A surfactant is a glorified name for a soap. And you think, whoa, why would you want a soap in that? Well, that's the beauty of cleanup. So once you're done making a mess and going to town and cutting, cutting to the chase, getting from point A to point B in a very efficient, timely manner, it's like, oh, now we gotta, we gotta clean up here. You don't want compounds and polishes that plasticize in the seams and molding and all that kind of stuff. So it's like, okay, well, now you just introduce water to this equation and it reverses it. It reverses it so it can wash away very cleanly, very easily, very quickly. Wow, thank you, Tom, for that. So here I am trying to weigh in on both sides of the fence. I've got manufacturers that wanna play both sides of the fence, and then I've got a company like this that only wants to play on one side of the fence. A fence that was built on not profits, as in not like, hey, I wanna compete against these guys. I just want to answer my problems. I don't want comebacks. I don't want swirl marks. I don't want hologramming. I don't want gumming up sticky gooey. I don't want the stench, the smell of solvents. You smell this? Of course you can't smell because you're in viewer land. I can smell and it's literally nothing. Like I, I could bury my nose, get it wet, and I just don't smell anything as compared to some of these. Like for example, the rubbing compound 3M. Whoa, okay. Now I could go down this line and I can just do the sniff check. So these don't even pass the sniff check. Once again, Tom stepped up to answer specific problems. It wasn't like, hey, how can I make a million bucks? How can I build a hundred million dollar company? How can I compete with these guys? It's like, no. Those guys aren't answering my problems as a body shop owner, which is why I decided to bring it to this industry called the detailers, the, the hobbyists, the enthusiasts, whatever works for you, whatever level that you're at, which is like, wait, uh, if that can perform at the top of the echelon of performance, which it can, can it perform for the do-it-yourselfer, the home hobbyist? It's like, yeah, it can. You know why? Because it's super, super simple and super, super safe. Because I could argue that this diminishing abrasives is less safe. You know why? Because you can't control how quickly those diminish. Okay, so yeah, you can't control everything in life. I accept that, but I want more control, not less control. So that's where I would argue that this is actually safer which is ideal for the home hobbyist, the do-it-yourselfer, the enthusiast, the professional detailer, or the detailer trying to get into the business but wants to simplify his life, doesn't have a huge working budget, and wants to buy and manage one product, not buy and manage two, three, or four products. Okay. Breathe, let out the ether, Darren. Ah, okay. With that said, I want to hear your guys' comments. I want you guys to shoot holes in my argument because what I'm going to do with that information is I'm going to go away from it and I'm going to figure out more and more ways to connect dots for you. And on that subject, let me talk about connecting dots because I can establish a dot, which is a piece of information. And I've got my little dry erase board here just for this moment. So here we have dots. Here's a red dot, blue dot, green dot. Now, I can establish the dots, and in this metaphor, the dots represent nuggets of information. So I could lay out, okay, this is abrasive technology, this is diminishing abrasives, non-diminishing abrasives. But you may connect it like this and like that, or you may bounce over here and connect it like this, 
or this like that. And you're like, whoa, I'm because I'm woeing. It's like, no, I want to establish the information, the dots. So dot number one, dot number one, one, one. They're the same, right? Those are two dots. So how am I going to connect these? These are bits of information. This is a symbol. It represents things. It represents information. So you can connect those in different ways. Maybe you can connect them not at all. Maybe you don't want to connect them at all, but let me connect them for you with a sign, a symbol like that, a plus sign. Now it's like, oh, okay, so there's some information, dot one, dot two, which is still dot number one, so those are identical, but still different information because they represent units of measurement. So now, guess what? They will represent two. One plus one is two. It's like, okay, well, how else would you connect those, Darren? I'm so glad you asked. Well, what if I did this? Suddenly we have a minus. Now I just bounce from addition to subtraction. Now this is a zero. So this is the end conclusion. These are the individual dots. Information. Why do I want to A, establish the information, teach you guys, and then show you how I, in certain ways, based on the context of the moment, will connect the dots. Do I want to do subtraction or do I want to do addition? Is this gonna be a zero or is this going to be a two? So that's me connecting dots for you. Because what I have found is that despite establishing and labeling those dots, people are going to connect them differently, which to bring it back home at the end here is hearing from you guys. Leave your comments below. Shoot holes into my argument. Once again, I'm gonna take that information and I'm gonna figure out better and better ways to refine this convoluted, complex topic called this into very simplified terms like this product, simple. It is simple and it is the answer. I once again want to give you the answers to questions that you don't even know to ask. How's that for a concept? I wanna be that critical thinker, that voice of reason in your world to help you connect the dots in a way that's like, wow, how come no one was connecting these dots before you, Darren? I don't know, but here we are. Okay, leave your comments below, and by all means, give it a thumbs up. Yes, mouse over it, touch it, whatever that requires on your device, give it a thumbs up, leave your comments below, and I will see you on the very next video.